Our GM at the time went back to the back. I went to the front. And then the beginning of the, what I like to say is like falling down a flight of stairs and comfortably landing on a landing every <laughs> like, you know, 10 <laughs> steps for the next couple of years happened. Yeah. But we learned so much during that time. Hey everyone, my name is Ethan DeLeon and I'm here with our founder and CEO of Small Nation, Jason Duff. Joining us on the show today, we have the owner of Iron City Sports Bar and local entrepreneur, Matt Brown. We want to welcome you to the Small Nation podcast where we share some of the valuable lessons with what we have learned about entrepreneurship, real estate, economic development, and more. The point of this podcast is to create value for you, the listener, and create a space to learn, talk about what's trending, and inspire others. Thank you, Ethan. Matt, welcome to the show. Thank you. Excited. I have been excited about this all week, so much, in fact, that I saved my black sweater today there you go, man. because this is Matt Brown Black. <laughs> I have known Matt for many, many years, and the dude looks good in a black shirt. And literally, that is like, if you look at most of his photos that are out yeah. on the internet, that is his thing. So I had to wear my black sweater today. You can't go wrong with black. It's a safe color. You know, it's and good. it's just more efficient. When you look at my closet, and it's like I have <laughs> 10 black V-necks, and it's just yep. easy. There's something to that. You know, there's people like they've studied very high, successfully producing thinkers, and many of them subscribe to what, exactly what Matt's saying. Like they like the consistency that they're so busy solving so many other tough, challenging problems that don't want to worry about that. Well, that's, that makes me feel good about <laughs> yeah, you know, that I'm just lazy and I like my clothes. You're an elevated thinker. <laughs> well, you mentioned the title being owner of Iron City Sports Bar, but the truth about it is, is that Matt is very humble, but is also um, the leader and owner of a lot of other companies and, vent and ventures. Um, I mean, that's eight Ohio properties. So he is an investor in student housing, um, which I'm excited to talk more about real estate and, and that with him today too. And uh, I could probably mention if we started adding up the LLCs that Matt has behind his name, we would be here for the rest of the episode. So um, no, it, it's a pleasure to have him. That's on the professional front. On the personal front, why Matt is important is that um, we have had a very deep relationship over the years. We mm -hmm. met um, in college, mm -hmm. and one of my favorite experiences of meeting Matt Brown <laughs> is that we were in a business class, yeah. um, a small business class, which our university had, and the responsibilities of learning about um, this professor, Dr. Banfi, is that he uh, helped uh, inspire us to start a restaurant for one weekend. That's right. So we were in charge and put in teams to create menus. We were in charge of sourcing yeah. food costs. We were in charge of getting food licenses. Mm -hmm. And then we had different staff. roles and jobs. Mm -hmm. What what were you? We're staff. I was uh I was actually like the videographer and then a server. All right, I'm a fan. Yeah. I, <laughs> when I met Matt, he had hair down to here. Seriously. Actually hey, longer come on, longer than yours, longer. Ethan. <laughs> no, but but here here is the thing is that I recognize when I met Matt, like he had this creative side where, you know, the, the capturing the right images and he mentioned video um, and, and then that lent itself to being able to, to market. And then the other thing that um, after we got out of school, uh, you worked professionally in a, an insurance job a lot, mm -hmm. like a lot of us do. Like you graduate, you go get the regular job. And then the thing that really impressed me is that uh, the next thing I read and learn about, Matt wrote a book. He literally was an author and wrote a book. And he wrote a book to help other young insurance agents in the That's industry right. understand how to get their name out there, how to market, mm -hmm. how to connect. Um, and after he wrote that book, like part of what we were all doing at the time is we were attending professional networking events. And what's great about having conversations with people at those events, you kind of get the behind the, the scenes story. Like we all have a little bit of bravado, like life is great. I'm, I'm doing so well in my job. I love my career. And, you know, having a real vulnerable conversation, he's like, so, so what are you kind of doing in this real estate stuff? And you're, yeah. you know, you're, you're working. We had just like, we, we really hadn't even bought our first building in Bell Fountain. Mm -hmm. We were talking about like taking what we we're learning in real estate and, and doing things here. And uh, at that point in time, I needed to build a team. Mm -hmm. I needed to bring on more people. So we've had guests like Adam Rammel yep. on the podcast. And Adam was one of our first employees. Um, at the time, it really was Dustin, I think, Adam. And then you mm -hmm. were like number three. Yeah. Yep. Number three in the beginning of any company <laughs> is a pretty darn important role. 
And at the time, uh, we were sharing offices in our family business mm-hmm. at Ohio Ready Mix. And, uh, you know, in a family business, you, you work with grandpa, you work with dad, you got to know grandpa <laughs> Jim did. really well. He was it, a great, man. And yeah. the thing about it is we... The, Matt would show up. What time in the morning would you show up to work? Usually about like 5.45 or 6. Wow. But Jim would beat me there. <laughs> My and grandfather was, would be there. You yeah. know, that was, first of all, that was one of the greatest stories, like for me that I've kept with me is that Jim, how old would Jim have been then? In his Probably 70s? late 70s, yeah. So Jim would come in and like we had this bullpen in the back. Yeah. And I would be at my desk because it was like the quietest time to get done. And I was like, and can you I describe got... what your desk was? Do you remember the kind of table? It yeah, wasn't a it desk. It was like a picnic, t- not a picnic table. But <laughs> it's like a card a table. Card table, real like, a high quality but, one. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah, but we put like filing cabinets <laughs> under it, so it kind of we made it like, look like a desk. It looked good. <laughs> no, but Jim would come in and he would be emptying the trash cans at all the desks. And I remember like the first time I got in there early, which is actually super cool to think that you guys got me a key. I could go in and actually work and stuff. And then Jim would be there like before me, but I never knew he was. He'd come in, he'd be emptying the trash cans. We'd shoot the breeze for a little bit mm-hmm. and talk to him. And I just always like thought to myself, man, I, I knew Jim's story. I knew he was first generation like of entrepreneur and built, you know, something significant, but here he was like coming through and just emptying trash cans. And yeah, dragging the bag through, but he would take the time to talk to employees as they were coming in. Cause, and I, he's super strategic about that. Wasn't he? He was making, he was humble about it and quiet, but he knew what he was doing. And it was, it was a smart, it was good. And Mm -hmm. it was a great example. I really resonated with that at that time. That was cool. And I I think the thing of those early days is oftentimes you don't know what you're building. It starts as an idea, Mm -hmm. but for us, we had hustle and drive and we had unique skills. So, you know, what I appreciated about Matt is Matt was very list organized and driven to like say, okay, Mm -hmm. this is the goal. I'm gonna break it down into all of these tasks and then I'm gonna put my head down and work harder than anyone else to get it accomplished. That's right. Yeah, that so <laughs> we put our heads down and, and I think that's where time flies is that we started buying and investing in buildings here in Bell Fountain. So we're Our studio is we're in the basement of the Main Street Marketplace right now. Mm -hmm. Matt was a part of us acquiring this building. And in the early days when we bought it, it was sure a beauty. And (laughs) what's funny, though, is if you remember, you asked me because you had hired me to do some marketing at the beginning. You were like, you're going to be doing a lot of marketing. Uh And then like this opportunity came for Center City Mall. And you were like, hey, do you have any experience in construction management? And I was like. (laughs) No, but I've insured contractors. You know, this is just so stupid. I was like, I mean, we can figure it out. And we, I mean, that year, it took, what, 14 months to do this project, I believe? Yeah, and the thing about it is everyone thinks that you need to know or have a title or a degree. And I think that was the difference when we first started. We didn't know any of that, but we weren't afraid to, like, ask questions. And then sometimes just go in and we would learn on the job. (laughs) So Just going for it. Yeah. renovating this building, the only tenant that we really had stay was the knife and gun store, which was in the front of the building, yeah. actually moved to the basement. And I've shared previously on the podcast that I was hoping we could just keep the knife and gun store. And Dave shared with me, I don't feel safe staying in downtown Bell Fountain. Yeah. And that's just how bad the town used to be. And we're like, wait a minute, you're a knife and gun store and you don't feel safe here. So we moved in the basement. We renovated this building. Mm -hmm. And I think the thing in the early days is that we were doubling down on finding other entrepreneurs that would take risk and were willing to work hard like we were. And there weren't a lot of people standing in line. Not at the beginning. No. and That was hard. Lonely. Very. And so, Scary. but, but part of it is like when you're young and maybe a little dumb, a little naive, <laughs> you're like, we're, we're going to figure it it's out. It's going to be okay. Yeah. And, and I think we've had Brittany Saxton, uh, on the podcast in early days, my, uh, Brittany and her mentor, Michael, when they opened up 600 downtown, what do you think that did for the town? Oh, that was, that was a shot in the arm that it needed. And we always kind of talked about that food really is a, a good food is a destination. And that really was like, I, I mean, you remember that time. It's like the traffic. What's super interesting is, as you notice in those years, we were just getting a revisit on traffic counts even in this community for Main Street. And I remember they were super low at the time because now they're like so high, like comparatively mm-hmm. speaking. But that definitely helped. I mean, it was huge. What if you think about 
us working that college project. We ran the restaurant. We sold the tickets. We realized how hard this was. Oh. But did you not walk away with the highest rush that you've ever had? Yeah, absolutely. Like and better, better than any pill, any yeah, like that alcoholic sense. beverage, whatever yeah. you name, <laughs> yeah. put on your list, whatever it yeah. is. Yeah, we'll keep it PG today. But like absolutely. that high mm-hmm. felt pretty darn good. It's that I don't know doing something that pushes you beyond what you normally think you could do, and then being able to see that you actually could do it with the help of others obviously yeah. but like it's super interesting to me he pulled it on off. that confidence that how you can continue to grow even though you're scared shitless behind the the curtain yeah like, i think that's you started buying property mm-hmm. why well you talking about like when we were first when i was we were first working here so i remember watching you and i was reading robert kiyosaki rich dad poor dad classic i read that <laughs> like and it was actually I, back up i didn't read it i listened to it on audio mm-hmm. and that was like my thing because i was driving 40 minutes back and forth you're commuting so the I was Honda. Like, yeah, that's right so i was like man i can crush books so i was just listening to everything but i got onto that one and it really opened my eyes up to be like i have to really start looking at my life and what i want why i want it and then design it to be going down these routes mm-hmm. that makes sense. And real estate to me made so much sense. And watching you and like learning, sitting shotgun, you know, with, you know, what we were doing. Because Matt time. really was kind of like a right hand. And, and what I mean by that is that in the beginning, we had to have people that were prospecting spaces. So doing advertising to say this place is available for lease. Mm-hmm. And I still miss this of Matt. One of my favorite skills he has, his Sharpie marker skills. Yeah. <laughs> he can take a white piece of it. He's actually really, he's very artistic. He can take a Sharpie marker and lay out a brochure that you don't even need a graphic designer to do it. And so in the beginning, we couldn't afford graphic designers. We couldn't afford nice websites. So like we had to like bootstrap and use a Sharpie marker and put things on the, the front door to get the calls. And so, mm-hmm. you know, I, I think in the beginning, you are the leasing manager. Mm-hmm. You're then the construction manager. Mm-hmm. You're then the property manager. Mm-hmm. And then I think it, you're just, just as people are hearing that, more weight, more weight, yeah. more responsibility. And then the other mm-hmm. thing, and, and this is probably, this is a negative of my leadership style. If I know you can handle it, I'm going to throw all the weight on yep. your back. Because there's, there's two things with that. Like number one, I kind of want to test and see how much you can handle, right. but on, on the on the flip side, like I I I need to get that stuff off my back because mm-hmm. I want to take on even more to grow the company. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's there's cost to that though. Absolutely. Yeah. And so you know the the DNA we work together ten years, mm-hmm. so um, you have to understand that we started from one property and probably by the time that Matt left in his employee role at Small Nation we are probably closer to 30. Um, and and those are significant projects. Big projects. And, like and, year long. And, and the thing about it is a lot of those restaurant focus. So yeah. the Brittany, you know, having the success of 600, we saw Adam and, and Jeremy and Brian open the brew fountain. And I think we, we had had a, a property on South Main mm-hmm. that was a Ponderosa. Mm-hmm. Do you remember Ponderosa <laughs> yeah, growing up? I do. I remember that auction too. Your grandfather went, didn't he? He did he go, there, yeah. And he's now. I remember he wasn't it. in supportive of us buying it. Truthfully, really? no. But it was it was fascinating, man, because I remember when we acquired that, our job was to get it rented, and so we created. Do you remember that development packet, like that recruitment packet? <laughs> it, was, because because what we needed, the town was missing. You have to understand the whole yeah. county of Logan County is forty six thousand people. Let me just ask our guests to think about this. 46,000 46, people mm-hmm. in Honda country. We have a lot of hardworking, good people yeah. that love sports, yeah. right? This is football country. Mm-hmm. How many sports bars do you think exist in Logan County at the time? Not very many, actually. You would no think B-dubs, yeah. no roosters, mm-hmm. no frickers, and then no very few places that you can go get a great beer, yeah. a great you know sandwich or steak, and then be able to have big TVs to watch well, a game. The void was wingers, truthfully. They left. When they left. Yeah, and that's closed. when that's why the building went up for auction. And so the goal was, well, let's just get wingers back. And I remember 
having that conversation and it sort of not going anywhere and so full you, circle yeah, you one wanna... a very successful entrepreneur in the sports bar industry is john hafey mm-hmm. um beer barrel which in ohio i think yeah. they're now up to like eight locations and growing yeah mm-hmm. we were we were so interested in trying to catch his attention we had a baker bake a cake custom cookies with, or yeah it was like a custom Wasn't cookie it? cake all made with beer barrel <laughs> logos and stuff with our proposal of like checking out this building. Yeah. We didn't get a single reply, <laughs> call back, nothing. Oh, I saw him. I saw John probably about a year ago and I said, Hey, <laughs> we were sitting at the Ohio restaurant. I said, no. I said, do you remember? He's like, you yeah, know, now I think about it. I do remember. That. And the thing about it is we were just ki- like dumb Dude, kids at the time trying young. to catch someone's attention, yeah. but it took those guerrilla marketing techniques. Mm-hmm. But I think you and I ended up after a year of trying, mm-hmm. we were pretty down on this. Mm-hmm. And I think at the time Matt said, he just kind of came to one day. I was like, I know what if I do this? And yeah. I'm like, cause you're going after those big name, like franchise, like rather than, I mean, right now we're all about small business, everything. Yeah. Right. But like at the time we're like, you needed somebody to come in and operate this space. Right. So that's what you're going for at first. Yeah. But after that didn't work out, that's what brought about this new idea. Right. Well, and I think you naively, when you don't know what it's really like, you know, yeah. to own and operate a restaurant of that size and magnitude. You get to you, be the you, owner. The owner. Yeah. And you think to yourself. <laughs> I know the owner, right? Yeah, it's like, and you think to yourself, especially predicated on like Brittany mm-hmm. and what Michael and Brittany had done and Adam and Jeremy and Brian at Brew. You kind of like to yourself, I mean, at least, you know, what I was thinking at the time was, man, if we build the right team, mm-hmm you can do this. Like I, I, I felt naively enough that I was like, I knew enough to do it. I can handle it. And it's like, I bartended at the Beagle at Northern, you know, for three years. So like I, and you eat good food, you know, you know what good food is. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Like, come on. And, uh, no, that's, (laughs) and that's just the beginning. Like that's where it begins. But this is where the behind the scenes was happening as Matt was Mm -hmm. using what his really great skills are of building the team. He's interviewing kitchen staff. He's interviewing servers. He's working on building a brand. So, you know, doing research about that history of that part of Bell Fountain, was a company called the Bell Fountain Bridge and Iron Company mm-hmm. that built bridges in steel that in the late 1800s, early 1900s was shipped all around the country. So he built the logo. He built the the name, the brand. We went through and worked with architects and engineers to pick out the light fixtures and um, engineered and updated the kitchen, figured mm-hmm. out the draft system, started working on the, the food and beverage program, like all these things behind the scenes um, and really – the excitement, because he's a really good marketer, he starts teasing out menu pictures and starts teasing <laughs> out like, and people are just, oh my gosh, we are so excited about this. Yeah. And then we hired a chef, a chef for the sports bar. And I say <laughs> we, because he and I, in the beginning partnered up mm-hmm. Yeah. and said, we're going to do this together. And I said, Matt, I, this is your gig. I'm here to kind of be on the sidelines and support and help where I can, but I can't be in the restaurant every day. And he kind of said, I'm going to be the guy. So remember, he has all of those. Yeah, while still supporting Small Nation, right? Right, and a full-time capacity at that time. And, and yeah. let's just be real. Yeah. Property manager, leasing manager, construction manager, marketing manager. You started <laughs> adding, like, I don't even know. Did you have a business card that had a title? No, I, Pro- really I think we called him out. I think like. he's called uh, my default <laughs> title for a lot of people. You're a project manager. Right, project but you really, manager, you really yeah. look <laughs> at all the things the project manager yeah. does. And people that, that are my teamers are laughing right now about this. Oh, yeah. They're like, I'm more than a project like, manager. We get that. <laughs> but yeah. like the thing about it is, is that we hired a chef. Mm-hmm. And do you remember the test dinner? Dude. It, but it was wonderful. Do you remember how great, like the no, food? Tell me about it. I want to yeah. hear about this. Yeah. No, so. Well, from a test center perspective, that went well enough. How many people came? Maybe 40, 30? Yeah, 40, 45. Our friends so like and family. a soft opening friends kind of thing. Soft opening. Everybody's yeah. supportive. Everybody's going good. We have a few hiccups, but... The people love the food. That we had these, the probably the best sauerkraut balls that yeah. I've ever experienced. Well, it was yeah. really like highly curated. Like, you know what? I mean, it was a very... Uh, cl- high class sports bar it food. It was. Like, yeah. If yeah. you look back at the pictures, if you really scroll back through the pictures. And remember, we shared that. all the pictures on social and, media. Yeah. What's well, coming. That, that really is like the learning. Like the learning is like, I loved marketing and I was like, we got to get business from mm-hmm. day one. And now, if you notice, like with, not to jump up, but it's like with other ventures I've done, I'm very quiet. 
mm-hmm. very quiet at the beginning because like, dude, if you can get people in, that's great. But if you can't execute, yeah, what, what's the point? Like, and that's where we were is it was, man. Well, I, I'm going to fill in the gap. So yeah, after test that, night, can, the next big opening night, mm-hmm. it's a Saturday. I just remember you, you, I mean, we, the, the people were standing out the door. They, you know, we had like all this, body all these body. sales, all these bodies. And remember our chef mm-hmm. was used to doing maybe one dinner service at right. six o'clock PM. Mm-hmm. And then. The, the prep was very minimal and then it close out and probably be out of the restaurant by 10 o'clock. Well, that that's not how a sports bar works. And particularly <laughs> when you open a new restaurant in a small town, everyone, everyone wants to try it. Right. And their expectations, because they saw Way the home. photos, they heard about the test dinner, they expect up here. Mm-hmm. Not only did we get our asses handed to us. <laughs> Badly. Badly. The chef and his beautiful knives that he had laid out mm-hmm. for his chef knives, he went like this. He folded them back up and said, peace, you guys, this this is your deal. Well, didn't even, which this is another learning point for me, is like I really have harbored no bad feelings or anything yeah. towards anyone in my history that's flexed in and flexed out because these are chapters and yeah. life happens, right? Life but is he, the journey. He, uh, yeah, he, he exited mid-shift, and um, I remember going back to the kitchen and all the cooks are like doing what they're doing, but it's kind of chaotic, and I was like, where's, you know, where's Chef at? And they're like, um, he went out back. And I was like, he's going out back and can smoke a cigarette or something on yeah. the middle of this busy shift. Like what? And I go out there and I just saw his taillights. And that was like <laughs> the beginning of like my, <laughs> truthfully, that was the beginning of my like being a, from a selfish perspective saying let down and being like, yeah. oh, shit. like now I got to pivot. What's that look like? Yeah. And that's when the GM went back. Our GM at the time went back to the back. I went to the front. And then the beginning of the, what I like to say is like falling down a flight of stairs and comfortably landing on a landing every <laughs> like, you know, 10 steps for the next couple of years happened. Yeah. But we learned so much during that time. You don't realize like you're, you're frying a wing and you're like, these wings look beautiful on the outside. But in those early days, I also remember that we were known for serving raw wings. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was a stigma, man. Yeah. Like, and it's because like, you don't know until you just don't know. You don't know, and it's like if I could, it's like people say this: if you could do it all over again, like sure, I yeah. would have it dialed in. But that's the learning is like, and what you go through, and it's amazing to think back. That was 2017, six years, almost mm-hmm. five and a half years ago. Mm-hmm. It feels like 20 years ago, truthfully, because of how much you really do learn over the course of just a. Right. And that was just the beginning because things did get really, really bad. Yeah. So happened. from there, take us, take us what happened. You're working full time still from Small Nation. Yeah. Have your chef leave, your restaurant that you're supposed to be running with this, you well, know. Well, yeah, we pivoted. Manager. Yeah, we pivoted through that. We, we, we sort of, we, you know, you're building a ship as you're out at sea, right? Mm-hmm. And so we, we, we backfilled. We figured that out temporarily. But my learning was, and while working full time with Jason, and a small nation was like, you, you can get so excited to pursue this dream. Um, but if your focus is, if you're overwhelmed and you can't focus, like everything starts to crumble. Yeah. And so for the learning curve of going from, and this takes me back to rich dad, poor dad of going from employee to self-employed, you know, from the insurance That's a jump agent. for a lot of people. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. And then coming back into employee world, working with Small Nation, and then going to this side where there's business owner and investor. And you're like, as a business owner, it's a completely different, it's completely different. Mm-hmm. Like, you, and I, and so for me over those, those years, I, I found that culture, if I had to boil this all down, culture is everything. Like, it really is everything. It, it It's the foundation. And I, I know that lot, that word gets tossed around so much, especially, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? On business talks and stuff. But if you really understand it, it's like, it's not that hard. And that was the learning at iron city because if about two years in, yeah, two years in we had, I had managers in place. I was trying to build what to me looked like how other like even Adam and those guys, how they were able to operate and still work here and still be 
operating from helping with marketing and support those types of areas. And I think I just naively thought to myself, like, I would be able to have a role like that. And that's just not how it works. It just isn't, not in my model. And so, like, two years in, we start really, uh, you know, I was going through a personal, like, crises as well. Mm -hmm. I went through a divorce. I'd been married for quite some time. I have four sons. And that was a very earth-shattering experience to go through while the business was essentially doing a, a little bit of a decline. Like it was like we Slow were experiencing like a, a top line revenue decline, which is a super good predict. Like, it, you know, it shows you that right. you're doing something wrong. Yeah, and, and, and just related to the reason why you were starting a business, the reason mm -hmm. why you were sacrificing was your wife and family. Well, and it, you know, right? and this is good learning, isn't it? Because like, this is something that I've grappled with for five years is like you, I lost my why in my mind and my body, I was like, what's, what's the why? And then it's like, it's almost like you were so blind at that time to not understand. Like my why is like very much probably what it was for Jim. Like I'm, my, I'm, I'm a first generation uh, college student from my family. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, like I'm the first one and going into being a business owner or entrepreneur world, you know, that's not something my family comes from right and yeah. so like for me it's like no really truly like no matter what the the what i want and what my purpose is is to do this for my family and then that's my sons my grandsons like my niece like our yeah. family so if you hold that true you really can go through all the shit, like mm -hmm. that you do go through and that's kind of like where we got to was at that two two yeah two and a half year mark and we were having major culture issues, like in terms of man, like this is something else that I've learned is like the old way of management is doesn't work like that. That died over a decade ago and I lived through it. It's we funny. were trained it's in, funny. in right. school. Yeah. Like, isn't you it create funny? the employee handbook. You, this is how you, you know, create schedules and accountability. Right. Well, even just from a, uh, how you, how you, like, at that time when managers think, how do I get this person to perform the way I need them to? Well, you don't get it by being abrasive. Yeah, it's yelling. not command and control It's not command and control. Right. Like, that does not work. Um, and so we were had managers in place and uh, that I had appointed. So I'm, I'm owning this. Like, this right. is me owning, like, the experience that no folks came well. through, yeah. like, in that period. I, uh, yeah, like, I feel like I owe that a lot of people apologies at times because, like, it was this Time. But like we didn't, we did not lead. We were our managers were not doing a good job mm -hmm. at that time, and it reflected. We went through a social media um, experience that went viral locally. That you know, it's funny because even now I've had an opportunity to talk with you know the employee that that had started that, and I talked to her a couple of years ago, and we made like, it was like a good talk. And I was like, I we learned it. a lot. Yeah. I like, I owned it and was like, dude, like I, like, I can't believe things got that out of control. And I remember like, I want to kind of talk about this cause I don't think people on the outside knew that this was happening behind the curtain. Um, but like at that time, it's like going through, going through my divorce. Um, I had leaned on alcohol so much at mm -hmm. that time as a, a relief. Yeah. And still working the small nation 80 hour work week and then doing the restaurant scene as much as I could. And to be, to be fair, you remember this. I was like, I was, I was there a lot. I was here, but I was there. It's like, I was pulled. We were trying to hit stuff and, you know, and right, trying to be a dad and, and trying, trying to, to yeah, navigate trying, the crisis of his family and like just trying heavy to get stuff. Yeah. And like, you know, at that time, and this isn't like a pity show, like I'm not doing that, but this is right. just reality. I think a lot of people go through it where you're couch surfing. Um, you know, I, I stayed with Zach Weber who we went to school with and he was yeah. working with small nation and he put me up on his couch for probably six months longer than he ever wanted to. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I was going through those issues and it was extremely hard. And I, I had when that the, the social media post went out, um, sort of it was just calling out like how bad we were in terms of how we treated staff, um, you know, in terms of like food and how like operations and people had pictures of stuff and just it was so bad. I remember calling you. In fact, I was at one of the Lakeview properties getting ready to show it, and uh, I mean the weight of everything. Yeah. was so much 
And I remember talking to you and I was like, I don't know what the f to do. And you were like, you just got to go in. And that's like all you said. And I, I got off phone and I cried because it was like a moment where you're like, there is no one else. Yeah. Like this is on you. And I remember going back in and being overwhelmed with the thought, because at that time, I mean, the only right answer to rebuild anything and to redo it is to just start removing the cancers. Mm -hmm. And so like, when you do that, you also have to remember, okay, that's great. Like, let's get rid of cancers, but how are you operating in a local market where everyone knows workforce everyone and yeah. everyone knows everyone and yeah. workforce is already hard enough and, and the rumor family and, and the everything. rumor mills already like yeah. picked up on the social media thing. So like people already just, you know, yeah. go down that rabbit hole. Um, it was, it was a very stressful time. I remember, uh, Haley from the chamber called me that same day and was like, Hey Matt, is everything okay? We had the better business bureau call us asking about iron city. And I just remember being like, Oh man. Yeah. I was like, dude, this is so bad. And, uh, and I think the other thing that weighed <laughs> is that this is Matt Brown, mm -hmm. Matt Brown in the community you know, the way he was involved in chamber events, the way he mm -hmm. would serve, uh, represent us at Small Nation. Like, that's probably even the heavier pressure is the mm -hmm. disappointment that the you're not only disappointing his new employees, his company, mm -hmm. you're also disappointing me. And, you. Mm -hmm. and and so, like, that, that pain, and I, I think kind of going back on that, like, you don't really know what someone's going through. And, and that's where I have a lot more grace with dealing with people that take on these kinds of Same. roles because you don't understand until you're in those shoes mm -hmm. of how yeah. hard this is. It's how hard and this if is. You're, and like knowing your intent, like my intent has always been good. Like right. we needed this. Like wingers was, you know, I have, I have, I say kids, but I have, you know, high school students that mm -hmm. work there uh, at Iron City with us and their parents met at wingers there. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it's a nostalgic, it's just a, it's, it's that building. It's a, it's a, and when I walked around to get the signatures for the liquor license and all that and got like 80,000 steps in three days type thing. <laughs> and literally all the people in that district uh, felt like 80% of them when they would answer the door be, and they found out which building was, were like, that building's cursed. Good luck. And wow. like, that's before. And yeah. the reason is that's there have been a lot of things that had tried that had tried never and worked. Yeah. And, you know, I think the thing about the, the large, you have to understand the scale of this restaurant. How many employees does it take to run an Iron City? It's part, there's part-time and full-time, but if you add it up, we have 30, 40. 40 count? We yeah. have 42. That's yeah. a very different headcount with payroll. And then what most people don't know until you get into this industry is your food cost because mm -hmm. you have a lot of proteins. This is, this is yeah. Is right it's alley. not like a pizza place. <laughs> like, it's different. No, and that's another thing is like what I have, you know, just to sort of skirt through that period because that was a very bad period. Right. But we started to come out of it, all right? Mm -hmm. And it took a solid year and a half of 14-hour days. Like, that's just what it is. Like, you have to put in the time. And I don't judge myself for that. Yeah. Like, you know, at the beginning, like when you're going through all these hard parts and these challenging times and especially if you've go, gone through divorce and stuff, you kind of feel like a failure. Like you're like, Jesus, what the, like, what did I do here? Like, and then reflecting and being like, well, I probably, I did. Like I, I probably wasn't, you know, present. Like there I signs, wasn't there. Yeah, I yeah. was, you know, like I'd mentioned before, like alcohol really had a strong hold on me in that period. And getting away from that mm -hmm. was like so huge. And it, yeah. Well, and I, and I think the, the thing that, when you care, you know, I think Matt and I, we have that brotherly kind of mm -hmm. relationship where I saw him going through this and I did two things. I was actually pretty hard on him to mm -hmm. say, get your shit together. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. like this, you have too much at risk. Yeah. Reminding him, you're a dad, you're these things. The problem is, is that was only putting more pressure on him and really forcing some resentment probably towards me. And yeah. so the, the, our relationship Number one, the weight of me, I use the word, I care. I, I, my care for him says, this is what you should be doing. Yeah. But that's not caring, like in the way of he's got to have his journey and his space. Yeah. And All so, that, the, that they're receiving is that, you know, I'm being disappointed. Controlled. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. To, or there's that, or I'm being yeah. controlled. And, and the problem is, and as you deal, like I have, 
I, I am an addict. Like I, I, I yeah. identify as an addict and most entrepreneurs Same. will. Yeah. Luckily my addiction and people that know me well is unsweetened iced tea <laughs> and I love to work. Yeah. I don't have hobbies. Yeah. I don't, like, I will, will work to the point that I have health issues. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so that's my addictive personality. Alcohol, probably any other types of things you put in front of me, sugar, whatever, n name your drug of choice. Mm -hmm. If I could abuse it and if I got in a situation where I needed it, I probably would abuse it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think that when I saw that with Matt and, you know, we, we had some really tough times. We did. Going through that. Like yeah. um, moments where I wasn't sure and I maybe you weren't sure you were going to pull through this. No. I, I really do remember. It's funny because I do talk to people that are close to me and I share with them. Uh, I remember being at my parents' house at the time after I got off Zach's couch. And <laughs> I was in my niece's bedroom, which was my old bedroom, but it was painted pink. And I was like, okay. And I remember being in there and going through this and being like, I don't know if I want to be like, you know, it's not like you, you know how depressed you can get. Like, it's like, I just, I think that this is, I think of anything that I can like share with people as part of my journey is being transparent about how hard this is and how many people I hear say, I want to do that. And it's like my feedback to them is, don't do this like or mate you better know you yeah first I didn't really I knew me at the time then you go through that whole experience which is like a multiple year experience and you question if you even know who you are yeah and you don't have a north star because and you're this, just kind of yeah this is your identity and if you can't correct. do that right then it's stripped away from you, you and then you're, you're like, just a whole of a person like what a what yeah. am I, what is this purpose? Like why? And I mean, there was weeks, months, um, man, some of those days, like some days you didn't want to leave the house. You know what I mean? You know, like where it gets so bad where, I mean, I'm talking financial. Yeah. Like where you're like, I'm not going to be payroll past 60 yeah. day terms on and you got payroll hitting and yeah, man. Um, and you're like, I don't know where this is coming from. And all I do know is as long as you know yourself and you don't judge yourself, if you're, if you're good with you and what you're doing and it, like for me, I'm doing this for my family. Mm -hmm. This is my legacy for my family. This is going to hopefully put them in a position that not financially. Cause I want them to, I don't want them to have the money. I don't care about like that part. Mm -hmm. What I really care about is that they can watch and learn from what I'm doing and then have the ability to, to go and pursue what they want to do because they will see that I have done this and been through as much and be like, man, if he did that, like I can, I can, I can go do something. Yeah. And I think that's kind of the goal. Like, I mean, everybody wants to be a, an entrepreneur right now. It feels like, yep. and I really, I really am hesitant when I hear people talk. I don't know how often, I mean, I know, I know how often we talked about it when I was here, but it's like, you know, I just don't know. I, I know for a fact people don't understand what you're going to sacrifice. Right. Yeah. And I appreciate your vulnerability, vulnerability to share some of this stuff. And, um, this is why I was really excited to have you on because we needed, we need this perspective too. It costs a lot. I mean, we, we try to make it a point to show that, uh, it's lonely, you know, it's, mm -hmm. it's hard, it's not easy. And I feel like a lot of times people look on and they, you know, they think it's easy. And so we, we try to make that, but it's also, there's like some very dark parts to it too. Mm -hmm. And very heavy things, um, that aren't just like, okay, you'll, you'll make it through with time. It doesn't, <laughs> not always works like that. No. Um, so yeah, I, I think that's very important. And to your point of like, yes, very seriously consider whether you should even be doing it, but also know where your lines are. Like you said, know your why. That's a yeah. very, you know, the very important part to it, but know where are your limits. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, like if it gets to this point, like what is your, like when you throw in the towel, like mm -hmm. what do you prioritize? Like um, if you have a family, like things like that, like you have to know those things. And I think especially going into a partnership, things like that, like you have to, <laughs> like if, if the other person is not there with you in that same mindset, it's, I mean, it's well, not looking good. You're kind you. of building a mm -hmm. ship mm -hmm. and how I've kind of looked at is that, um, and I'm so thankful for the DNA, just like you mentioned with your chefs and people that have been a part of this journey. 
things may be a little salty it, it, in the it, when immediately happens when the in transition the media, happens, sure, and sure. then you give and then you give time gives perspective, and so I recognize with the ship that I run here is that there will be times where people are all on board and, and resonating with that, and That's there's right. times that people need to depart. That's right. And so you know, for Matt and I, I think the taxing and heaviness of the pressure that I expected and was putting on him, the, the demands of that, um, why he's also trying to run his business. And then the kind of the emotional pain that I was dealing, watching him go through the mm-hmm. addiction, we just came to a realization that we, we can no longer work together. It was just hard. It, and it, it was like taxing both of us. And truthfully, you were right. Like what's, f- what I, I mean this because People have to have their journey. Like you have to go through this chapter and it is going to be a chapter. You're going to have to deal with it and you're going to make poor decisions. I've made very poor decisions when I was at my lowest, Mm -hmm. you know, but like everybody does. Everybody goes through Even the most successful people Mm -hmm. hurt. And honestly, I think a lot of leaders hurt more Mm -hmm. because they take more responsibility on than most, but no one is perfect. No. But when you're going through it and you know that the decisions you may be making are not resonating with your own self and yet you're still just sort of like lost and yeah. you're trying to figure this out. I, I mean, for me, it's almost like growing through it and then learning to forgive yourself. It sounds cliche to say that, but it's, it, I mean, it's truth. It's like learning to accept like, yeah, that was a bad period. Yeah. Like my intent was not bad. Right. Like it really wasn't. But like that was a bad period for me. And then coming out of that and literally the last two years, you know, and what's fun is or for me at this point is like I have such empathy for so for anyone. Like and now it's like when you talk about employees and how, you know, people go through life, like the reason business is hard is because it, in most models it's completely predicated on people. And like when you think about that and you I just use myself as an example, like I go through that period of and like how much turbulence did that create for your boat? You know what I mean? And then I, then I use perspective and I look at it and I'm like, how much turbulence am I feeling from certain individuals in my own yeah. ecosystem, you know, our, yeah. our team that I'm like, I feel for you. Yeah. Like I get, I get you're going through life crises right now, crisis right now. And so there really is for me, like what I've gotten better about is like accepting when people are like, I'm out and they just walk out on you, you know, or they, you can respect that they're no, making a decision they've that had, like they, they've had they, to, they met their line. Like right? they, they've gone yeah. to what they can tolerate and do. Even if like it's unbeknownst to me at that moment, right. what I had done or what our, our company has not followed through with or fulfilled for you. And also I'm, I'm realistic to know it's not always our fault as the company. Right. Usually it's an internal thing they're that dealing with. you're dealing mm-hmm. with. And that's where the empathy comes from. And that's why like, I really can't harbor a bad grudge towards any single person that's ever right. flexed in or flexed out. Yeah. That's huge. And you know, thank you for, for sharing that perspective because only by going through it, did you learn it? Right. You know, yeah. um, what advice would you give someone who is going through their darkest time? on a team ask your yeah no i gotta ask yourself why you're doing what you're doing if you can't if it's about money you ain't gonna win like you're not like there has to be a higher reason there has to be something you have to drive enjoyment like you said it's me accepting who i am and i have an addict personnel i'm an addictive person and it's about focus it's about shifting focus like i've spent a lot of time listening to audiobooks, not reading, but on this topic. And it's like, once you figure out who you are, what you're wired best to do and what you can accomplish and not judging yourself. A lot of people say, you know, I mean, I deal with this a lot and you talk about partnerships and stuff and people say things like, you know, well, I have family. I need some work life balance or I need time with my kids. And I understand that. And I say, that's good. That's Mm -hmm. good. Because you are recognizing that you otherwise would feel like a piece of shit. you weren't doing that. And I grappled with that for years when my boys were really young. And I was, like you mentioned, how you get into real estate. And I started by flipping houses in Ada and then getting in some rentals. And we're doing all this in Iron City. And then you get into more. St- it's like, 
you know, at some point you just have to say, you know, if you're a professional athlete, you live a different lifestyle. Yeah. And I'm not talking about, you know, <laughs> Lambos and watches and <laughs> like that. I'm just saying your <laughs> lifestyle is different. Yeah. And an entrepreneur's lifestyle is a hundred percent different. And if you were not on board to be able to put in 14, 15 hour days, and I'm talking 26 days straight sometimes if necessary, and that means Saturdays and Sundays, then you ain't going to make it. And you have to find people in your life that will really sacrifice to support you. hundred percent. And you have to acknowledge that. And I will tell you when it's, there's another word that gets thrown around and I hate it. But when you say fam, when people say family, like it's like, it is family. My family is anyone who bleeds from their eyes with me, like literally. And I, I, I have, I think you're wired like that. If you see someone that's like, just giving their all. Yeah. And, and you double think, down on them. And yeah. And you think to yourself like, you know, and it's not even about owning something. Cause like, honestly, like truth is like, I don't know if you want to own this because it's, it's not exactly <laughs> like a good time. I mean, it can be wild. As <laughs> so, and it's not easy, but the people closest to you, um, you who, are, know, who are there with you along the journey? Mm -hmm. Like the, the, and, and yeah. putting in the hours and the reps and, and having, you know, I've had difficult conversations with the closest of closest people next to me. Um, you know, like, even, you know, it's just funny, like how I recognize now burnout. I recognize I'm so hyper aware of it in our companies that I, 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 I even when I hear like a, a manager that's like on fire right now, when they're putting in six days a week, I start getting nervous. Yeah. I don't know if that's normal. I do because like, I'm like, I don't, I'm not saying you're not strong enough inside. I'm saying I'm concerned for you to get burnt out. And yeah. then what happens is in most cases, they feel almost like they, they can't do this anymore because they're getting from home, you know, Everywhere. home saying they're saying sh them. you're never here you're and it's like you're judging yourself and now you're like you feel terrible and then you blame you know the company or you just are like i can't do this and it's overwhelming it's like man i don't want that mm -hmm. like i'd almost rather just find like and we're finding that now it's like it's just finding like trying to be realistic enough to know when you're building a team and a company to just know that it's not it's never going to be perfect but know that you have to like let your people have lives mm -hmm. because most, most people need to have lives. I'm not saying I don't have a life. I mean, I have, I love what I do and right. I'm, I've accepted this lifestyle. You can't kind lifestyle. of give that program and force it upon everyone no. else. It, and I'll say that that's probably something that I've reflected on with my leadership style too. Cause like in the beginning when it was just you, Adam, Dustin and I, like we were all committed on that program mm -hmm. and we could burn really hard in our twenties committed yep. to that program. But you do kind of wake up and like, you know, whether it's energy, whether it's health, whether it's other priorities like relationships or, or family, like you, you, you're at a crossroads. Mm -hmm. it, it, you can't be everything to everyone. No. You got to pick some priorities. Yeah. Yeah. You have to choose. Yeah. You know, you said energy and it's very true, you know, and energy comes from a lot of areas. I mean, I should be in the gym right now, you know, not right now, but like, I'm not, I'm at a place like I'm not going into the gym right now because it's just long days mm -hmm. and you got to put in the time, but I'm getting my steps in like, trust me. But, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. but I will say like, you know, sleep. I don't know how I'm getting on this topic, but it's just sort of like something that's percolating in my brain about this because yeah. like I have sleep apnea, um, so I have a sleep machine. Mm -hmm. So I look like Darth Vader when I go to bed, basically. <laughs> but like, listen up, ladies. Yeah. Right. <laughs> but you know, it's true. Like, I listen to like you know Joe Rogan and a bunch of other people that he talks with, and it's true. Like, you know, energy really is like the lack of oxygen. I mean, it's the lack of oxygen, and when you have sleep apnea, you start to realize that. And so for me, you can grind fourteen-hour days if you're not abusing yourself at the end of the day. Like, mm. you know, like you, if you, if there, I mean, I'm a living proof of it. Like you can wake up the next morning, you can get a solid seven hours like mm -hmm. of sleep. I mean, you know what I mean? Or whatever it is, six hours and be like, it's good. So, so Matt, 
culture was a big theme. Huge. And then the other thing that I am so impressed with is the way that you give back to the community. Can you speak a little bit about that? Yeah, so that's just, I've always been that way. So we backtrack like just real quick, Reader's Digest story. Um, when I was growing up, I had lawns that I mowed. I just started with my grandma's and then it went from church lady to church lady. Yeah. And next thing you know, <laughs> you you got like 25 yards and you're 16 years old and it's awesome. But my dad was super big as I was growing up that he would tell me, you know, put 10% aside for church to tithe. Right. All right. And so that was like my form of giving back. And I remember like, well, I made 200 bucks a week being like, all right, here's 20, put it in the envelope. And then yep. on Sunday when I went to church, I put in the, you know, the tray when they pass it around. And so like, for me, I also feel like if you're, if you're going to be a person, because whether you want to be or not, you go into entrepreneurship, you have a small business, you are a leader in the community, or you are put in a position to be a leader in the community. You have higher expectations from those in the community on you. I mean, it's just natural. That is what's expected. And part of me feels like you have a higher obligation. And like, these are vehicles. These are businesses. Like, I'm not yes. romancing, right. you know, the restaurant itself. I'm saying these are vehicles to pursue what, my ambitions are to get to in the next 20 years. Um, and I don't intend to keep like, that's just, that's just not good. Like I like to be able to give back and, you know, it's nice to be recognized for it. The Ohio restaurant association well, did recognize iron. In your, yes. Year. Your yeah. award, you're the best community partner. Probably. And just to give him a few other brag points, like when it comes to local schools or local organizations like Matt and iron city is oftentimes doing 10% of proceeds to, the cheerleaders to the football team. And yeah. you have to understand in our community, we have lots of school districts, not just one. Five, so yeah. he is six, very six, involved six. in all of those. And so I, I think if you talk to people again, not only is iron city known as a great place to get dinner or lunch or to grab a great beer or beverage, but it's like, I think out of any restaurant in our region, it's the restaurant that gives the most. And that's a, that's a special thing that, that not only is it good, the good and right thing to do, but it's, it's, I think earned you a lot of business. It has. And it's, you know, yeah, with the schools, it just, to me, that makes sense. Giving back to the actual community you're in and you got it. You know, it's, it's been rewarding too, though, because you talk to some of the kids like right now working with, uh, um, Dean Wetzel on um, AAU. We're going to do a dine to donate event is what we call them. We do them every Wednesday. We donate 10% of our sales to that organization. And typically you are right. We do a rotation with the schools for their athletic boosters. Um, but for this AAU team, for the kids, he's like, you know, AAU membership fees. My, my other, my, one of my sons is in an AAU team. I know there's fees, there's travel commitments. Right. It's, it's a commitment yeah. and it's a good outlet for these youngsters. And he's like, you know, any sponsorships help, you know, yeah. pay their fees. And it's like, let's do a dine to donate brother. Like, let's do that. I know I can probably get 500 bucks raised. Like we can, you know, that'll at least help. And like, to me that feels good because I just, I really do mean it's like, it is a, something that's been impressed on me since I was able to create my own income. Right. Like where you, you have an obligation to give back yeah. if you're in that position. And I think his employees see that, his customers see that. Like it goes into building that culture that that's what Iron City does. Yeah. Um, now, since Iron City, because I want to mention, mm -hmm. you now own a few more restaurants. I do. I was going to ask that. you, but, yeah. what was what made you want to get back into the game and even like, you know. Grow the game. <laughs> double down. <laughs> you know, it's uh, we always used to joke like, what's better than having one restaurant, two restaurants? <laughs> that really was our <laughs> It joke. was our ongoing joke because yeah. it's kind of a, I mean, because having one is a headache enough at times, right? <laughs> <laughs> but no, I, again, I really do like this restaurant business. And the reason I do is because if you look at restaurants and anyone who is a restaurant person listening, you know this to be true. We are all broken people, really. And I like, to, and I mean it's in the best way possible. I say it with my staff even, but we are on the island of misfit toys. Like, you know, like that's, it really wow. is. Like we're, we're, we're the people that at times we've, we've been cast out and, and I know, and I know this is common in probably other industries, but in the restaurant world, it really is. It's just the way it is. Yeah. And for me, I, I, I have grown to love having some kind of impact with individuals like that. Cause I can relate 
I can connect. I can, I mean, with my staff, I'm a hundred percent vulnerable and transparent about my life, about what's happening. Like, yeah. it's just the way I am. And I just think, you know, it's like holding certain information back. Like, you know, it's like more like, no, like I wear my emotions on my sleeve. Like I am who I am. It's an like, opportunity to impact someone's 100%. life. One and, on one. and also let's look at this also from the business perspective. Like, um, I think, and I know now because I'm seeing it happen on our group is Bobber's Pizzeria at, at Indian Lake, for example, um, purchasing that a year ago. Um, and then bought the real estate this year. That has been a good seasonal business model, but again, hard learning. Like our oven broke down right at the beginning of the season. Oh, so we had two oven decks, right? Yeah. Well, we're a pizza place and that's our oven. We spent like eight to 10 weeks calling, getting people in, replacing the element, replacing this, trying that. It worked for a minute, die back down, do it again. And it's like, we'd be on two and a half hour wait times. People were pissed. I'm like, Oh my gosh, I get it. Like, it's just another, like falling down a flight of stairs. Yeah. The difference is, is this time, like you've, you've gone through that at such a high level of stress that like now I'm like, this is going to be all right. This, this is all right. Because I also am like self-aware to know like how this local world works in terms of, you know, I've seen restaurants go through struggles and get bashed on Facebook, but you know what? They come back, not all of them, but most, they yeah, come too. back yeah. and you, you get an opportunity to come back. And especially like the thing that has helped me is on social media is when that went viral for Iron City and that was such a bad time. It was hand to hand combat on the way up out of that hole. Meaning when people were posting on like the Logan County Facebook group page, whatever it is, they're all over. And they I'm really popular on, on there. I know. You're, you're, you're a weekly trending <laughs> yes. item, man. Everyone right now, go find a Facebook group. And yeah, just go. there's lots of <laughs> really nice things. Uh -huh. yeah. you, know, and it, you know, what's funny is like, if you listen, some, some people's, some situations require you to respond, some don't. Okay. Wisdom but, right there. You know, but, and I've, and I've had to make that decision on what, where and when to respond. But at the beginning of that coming out of the hole, dude, I responded to everybody. Yeah. And like, you just start feeding the fire. I'm oh sure man. I like. would just respond back and be like, you know what? We're not perfect. I apologize. We're going to make that right. Send them a gift card. And a lot of people like you get, I get so much this because even from like managers at times where they're like this wasn't our fault it wasn't even our fault yeah. like, why are we sending them a gift card and yeah doing all this and it's like because like it's the right it's the right answer like yeah. do like less friction here yeah like why are we why are we getting an argument over whether or not like they really did have a bad experience because odds are they probably did if they're that worked up over it or yeah. that upset like so let's just make it right and i mean the same thing goes for like i mean it's dumb but like google reviews and stuff like uh you know People have bad experience. They leave you at like any like digital marketer will tell you reach out to the person, you know, follow up with them, do what you're saying, you mm -hmm. know, like make sure they come back and have a better experience, you yeah. know, and then they will end up respecting you more and be a an ambassador for your business, even though they were the one that was, you know, driving business away. Well, at that beginning. time, yeah, and it's well, and then we go from Bobbers. I'll just pivot. So Skinny's in Kenton, Skinny's Tavern in Kenton. This this is where it's like a kind of a hole in the wall little place. Uh -huh. um, dive amazing, bar. It's a dive, dive bar. bar. Yeah. yeah. But it's like it's known for its burgers. They're hand patted, half go. pound burgers, and you know it's a it's a fun it's a it's just a fun little place. And I love places like that. And I grew up going there. Um, with my uncle Fred Markley, who was an attorney in Kenton and a judge at one point as well. But he took me, he took me there when I was young. And I remember sitting at the bar and eating like a burger and being like, this is a fun little place. And yeah. then so like full circle, like, you know, that came about as simple as like the, uh, well, there was four owners, but one of the like the couples they were two couples. One of them lived next door to my mom and dad and I'd known them my whole life. And so they'd, talked to me last summer and we're like they actually reached out asking if I was uh if I knew anyone that would list the restaurant for sale specifically and if they had to find someone in Columbus to do that and I was like well I know someone that could but like what are you looking to do and she was like I don't 
looking to just sell and kind of move on and retire, you know, that type of next chapter. And I was like, I would love to talk to you. And the reason <laughs> I love, you know, skinnies, it's been around since 1958. Yeah. Howard, um, uh, uh, Thomas, Howard Thomas, uh, originally called it, uh, Thomas's tavern, but his friends and the locals nicknamed him skinny because he was a big dude. Yeah. And so like, it just became skinnies at some point in the seventies yeah. and it's like, and then the, they rebranded the name and all that. And so there's actually in the, in the restaurant, we have a, a list of all of the times that the, the real estate and the business has changed hands. And, uh, it's very inter. It's just cool. Yeah, and you know, it becomes like, part of the DNA of the the city or the the town that it's in. Yeah, yeah. And Kenton's my hometown. That's where I was born and raised. Yeah. You know, and so like for me, it was coming back to the community, and you know, the community. Uh, you know, the thing about that is too, and you've dealt with this, is like you you have supporters that are always your supporters, and then you always will have people who just aren't cheering for you. Yeah. You know? And that's life, man. Yeah. So, like, I knew I'm well going into my hometown. You're going to have both sides of the fence to work Most of it's here. always rooted in jealousy. Or mm -hmm. they maybe have a dream or an idea that they want to do something, too. But as you hear, they're oftentimes not willing to make the sacrifices. True. And just getting... I've gotten so used to getting feedback. You know, like, where people give you feedback. Mm -hmm. And... I'm good with it. Even if like, I know like you just don't understand what's happening in this situation. You don't have the context of what is going on. You know, yeah. Here's how you'd be more successful. I always like when they start out that way. If you just would add a <laughs> special on your menu and actually, can you do a buffet on Sundays at 11? If you would do that, I know you would be successful. Well, just add breakfast. Oh yes. Yeah, just add breakfast. <laughs> yeah. That's easy. You guys sound like you're talking about war stories. And stuff like I, it, it's just, it's just part of it, but yeah. no, that's, that's been fun. And this past year also just, uh, um, dovetail on um i had uh an opportunity i had been working really hard you know terry you had terry on terry summers terry is, oh yeah episode has dropped as well yes yeah yep, it's live it's, yeah. i thought I, I saw that and uh i joined terry's i got back with terry last year just like building friendship and then he was like dude he's like i'm starting like a mastermind and i was like i'm in because like for me you know i like I like talking with people who are doing similar things. And Terry's focus is in the real estate game. He had a restaurant, though, down in yeah. Gahanna. Mm -hmm. And he talks about <laughs> He talks about that. Yeah. 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 And the I, episode. His story. Yeah. He had a wild story, too, man. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but uh, no, like, from the real estate perspective, I know that I want to grow that residentially. Like, that's what I like. Like, I like yeah. single-family homes. I like multi-units. It's cool. Right now, that's kind of, like, what I'm interested in. And I went and joined Terry's Mastermind on literally just because I wanted to be around a group of people doing and listen to them talk. Yeah. And I wanted to just be in the room. So I spent a weekend with, like, 30 people and from all over, mostly in Columbus area, but we had several people from out of state. And... You know, now I have some, you know, good relationships from that. And I learned about virtual assistants and how they can be helpful for property management. God, I wish we'd had that. It's amazing all the tips and tricks shit, you hear from from people who are movers and shakers, right? Mm -hmm. Like everyone's got something unique that they do. So just to be around some of that is yeah. super valuable. And there's so much good information. Yeah. Stuff you're not going to learn. You know, it's almost like those are, that's the shortcut. And, and yeah, I'll pay, I'll, I'll invest the fee. Yeah. Because like it's good information yeah. and you're good it's learning. Worth it to you. I mean, for me, it was like, I, I didn't know how to, I didn't even know how to structure a deal. You yeah. know what I mean? Like other than a basic transaction, like, well, you got to go to the bank. I get, you know, you're 20% down or whatever it is and do it that way. And then you start to realize like, you know, with the Iron City experience, like I got my first taste of a private money lender situation with right. your dad. Yeah. And yeah. it was like, for me, the weight of that, if I can say, I mean, that was, I, I bid off 250000 up front for the opening Iron City. And, bro, if I can tell you, like, and I think I'll, it's, like, the amount of weight you feel when you when you first, like, you're signing. That's real just, money. Just yeah. document, you know, these agreements sign over here, and over. Here, and, here. like, literally knowing that I was working for you, too. So, I was like, <laughs> I'm going to be working the rest of my life. <laughs> 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 this don't work. Yeah. But, you know, now... 
it's so interesting to hear creative ways to do and structure deals. Yeah. And I've got to meet so many neat people and like new capital partners and just. We'll have so to have you come back and, yeah. and dive and, into And that some was of the that thing too. when we began this episode. Matt has so much knowledge and yeah. so much experience in so many different areas. Yeah. Um, I hope you will come back yeah, on the to. episode. Yeah. But here's the thing that I want to share is that when we first started working together, we painted a vision and dream of that ideal life. And I think that ideal life was getting you financial freedom. That ideal life when you charted out with um, Iron City is like, I want to own the real estate. I want to own the business. And even though the path that we initially set out with the various mm -hmm. partners and managers mm -hmm. and employees, you know, we're, you just, this place of being thankful because mm -hmm. you still got to the end goal. Mm -hmm. Maybe it wasn't what no, you, well. <laughs> <laughs> and can I, you know, what's funny is like this sh literally like at halftime i mean perspective you know and especially like with the restaurant world dude every day you don't yeah. know what's coming <laughs> like which can be a really big high because yeah, like it is a little bit you're like what's this wave gonna bring well right? you know and that's what you, you know i and with the people that i'm most close to in my network that are my team it's like we talk about this every day and it's like dude you just do get used to the waves you do and then you start to, you, like, there's going to be scarier shit ahead. I know. But, like, you do start to feel like, I can handle this. Yeah. Not only can you handle it, you're doing an awesome job. Thanks. And I think the people that listen today, um, you know, take time to find out about Iron City Sports Bar. I can tell you you're going to get some great wings. You're going to get some great food. And then you're going to go to Indian Lake to Bobber's. A um, get a pizza there and then you're going to go up to skinnies and enjoy a, a cold burger. beer and a great burger so it's all health food the entire I mean, yeah, day so trip you're gonna take. that's why you gotta have a gym <laughs> membership yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but thank you matt Thanks the, again. the big nugget again um the cost and sacrifice of entrepreneurship and i think you hear from matt about it's not easy in fact it's really hard but mm -hmm. he still gets up every day thinking about his family the work ethic, the culture of the team of people that he is building around him and is not only doing and maintaining, but he's growing it. And yeah. that's pretty darn awesome. So nice work. Thanks. Thanks, Matt. Thanks. Um, quickly, can you highlight uh, you know, a couple of professional development resources that have helped you along your career? I mean, you re mentioned Rich Dad, Poor Dad, but anything else? That, books, podcasts? Yeah, I mean, it just depends on where you're at in your Sure. Your, your journey yeah. but like when i first started i uh anything that was self-improvement um you know, every Dale tony Carnegie, robbins tony robbins cd Dale, we listened to them burn all, that yeah. over man <laughs> i mean anything that you can honestly if i had to baseline it, it's like anything you can do to enhance your emotional intelligence listen to that mm. because like it is a, it is a it is like a muscle to learn that yeah and that is like probably one of the greatest skills that i've I know that I am, if I, if I can brag about myself is that I, I chart out very high on emotional intelligence and it, and it serves me well. I think mm -hmm. it, as leaders, it, it is leaders, super yeah. important. And then where can people follow you? Keep up with what's happening to your business you ventures. Know, I knew you were going to ask this. So, <laughs> you know, here's, here's the thing right now. I mean, you can follow our restaurants. Like we're on Facebook sure. and we got pages we follow and I'm on Facebook too. And Instagram. better yet, go to the restaurants, go to the restaurants, please. Um, but, <laughs> Right now, in this period of my life, it's head down work. And I don't have, like, it's funny, like a decade ago, 15 years ago, I had, like, a, my own website and, <laughs> and was trying to, like, be that, like, you know, person that could go talk on stage, have a book. And do he that. can still do all of that. And someday, he's in this phase of his life right now. But someday, and I think that the people are listening, they're going to be reaching out to you, want, wanting you to teach them more. Yeah. Because this is the stuff that, you can't read in a book. Mm -hmm. You got to go to the source and yeah. you got to hear these authentic, real stories and, and, and again, see the success. There, mm -hmm. There's a lot of success. He, he's growing his company a lot and that's uh, incredible. But it's come as a sacrifice. And if people can listen so they don't make the same mistakes, mm -hmm. that is worth any check you could write him. Yeah. Cool. Thanks. 
Uh, I'm sure you'll take a check though too, right? I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, cool. Well, I'll try to link a few things, you know, the restaurants and things in the, the show notes. But thank, uh, you. thank you so much for being on. I know I was I was looking forward to this one. I'm glad we finally were able to get you on and, and hope to have you back someday. But Appreciate it. Yeah, this good time. Fun. Good. Thanks, guys. Uh, you're good at podcasts too, man. <laughs> you should start one. He's a natural. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you everyone for tuning in and checking out the Small Nation podcast. You can find us anywhere that you listen to your podcast, including Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and even the Small Nation YouTube channel. I hope you're able to pull some value from that conversation, and we hope to see you in the next one. If you enjoyed it, be sure to leave a like, comment, or a five-star review to help more people to discover this podcast. Stay tuned to Small Nation on social media to keep up with all the cool projects that are happening here. And until next time, this is Ethan with the Small Nation podcast signing off. Small Nation.